Hey everybody, Gumby here. We're coming at you with a fight to win 151 predictions. Now I was originally gonna do a live stream, give commentary over the flow stream on this, uh, talking about the fight to win, but I have the best of reasons not to be able to do it live tonight, and that I actually get to be on the mat. After six months of lockdown, Santa Clara County, the place where I'm at, is finally allowed limited gym contact and action going on. And this will be the third class that I've taught in person in the last six months. But you can be sure that I'm gonna catch my favorite promotion, Fight to Win, a little bit later on on the replay. Now before I get into the predictions, you have to understand the Fight to Win win set, and that the only thing that counts is the submission. And if a submission doesn't occur, it's submission attempts that go. This is very different from the IBJJF rules, whereas positions, sweeps, counters, etc., etc., it would be worth everything. Uh, the only thing that matters are submission attempts. And a lot of times people get confused by the rule set and Fight to Win, uh, so they complain about the results later on. Now that you know though, you'll have a little bit more of an informed decision when you actually watch the matches. And while I don't think there's a perfect rule set out there, I do think the idea that you're trying to make people fight to win or fight to submit actually makes for more exciting matches. And if you've ever been to a fight to win live, you'll know that they're one of the best promotions out there. Fight to win events usually hold a few dozen matches on there. I can't possibly predict every single one because I'm not really well versed in every single matchup. So I'm just gonna talk about the three main events. I used to be really good at the prediction game, but I'm a bit rusty to be honest with you. But I won't cop out. I'm actually gonna try to predict the victors on the matches that I'm calling tonight. First match I wanna talk about is a 185 pound gi division where we have Gabriel Arges versus Marcio Andre. Now, Marcio Andre has actually been more active as of late. He's competed a few times in Fight to Win, but he's coming up from the featherweight division. So the 185 pound division is something new to him. And remember, at Fight to Win, you have a day before weigh-in. Gabriel Arges, out of the last few years, might be one of the most technical 185 pounders out there. So my official prediction is Gabriel Arges. Coming up next in the co-main event for the light heavyweight Gi title, Masters division, we have Rafael Lovato Jr. versus Tex Avery. Now I have a lot of respect for Tex Avery's game. He's exciting, he's unpredictable, he has a killer series of leg attacks, including a wicked ankle lock and heel hook finish. But remember, this match is in the gi where heel hooks aren't gonna be a factor on this. For that reason, I think Lovato Jr. is a pretty easy pick on this. Aside from which being one of the most decorated American competitors ever, I think stylistically the way that Lovato can apply his pressure uh, and avoid the leg gains or whatever Tex Avery might be trying to do from the bottom will make the difference on this match. So my prediction is Rafael Lovato Jr. Now in our main event for the Black Belt Lightweight Gi title, Kennedy Marcel from Cabrina versus Oswaldo Cachin Mojino, one of the founders of Aries. Now, Cachino has actually been fairly active going three and two in fight to win this year, whereas Kennedy's had one match before the pandemic and really haven't seen him since. In a lot of ways, this is a match of what's sure to be the new generation coming up in Kennedy versus the uh, veterans that are still holding the line in Cachin. I think the activity that Kashin's putting on right now and his familiarity with fight to win rules is probably going to give him the edge in this match. Um, I don't expect to see a finish on this one between these two competitors, um, but unlike some of the main events that happened before when people fight to not lose as opposed to fight to win, I think this is a great matchup and I'm excited to see this under any format. So my official prediction, Kashin takes this one, but it's going to be a close match. So there you go, my quick predictions for Fight to Win 151. Again, unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough with every single competitor to make a prediction on every single match on this, but I'm telling you what, you will better watch the whole event. Oftentimes, the best action is under the undercards, and if you follow along on Fight to Win's Instagram, you'll often see some highlight finishes that you'll never see anyplace else. Thanks so much. Let's see how these predictions go. Can you beat me? I'll see you on the mat.